Alrighty, I'm here to bring you guys another EVE update video. Uh, today we have the Siege Green update. Uh, I haven't read this yet, but there's been discussion in my Discord and I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, the TLDR that I understand so far is that production material requirement reduction in uh, capitals and for pirate ships. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so here I have the dev blog, uh, Eve News View Siege Green, and I'll have a link below in the description. And we'll just go ahead and start reading this uh, right on through. So Capital Capsuleers, this is aimed at capitals. A new update is now available to test on the Singularity test server, bringing sweeping changes that are sure to shake the lands landscape of capital combat and structure defense. For starters, the blueprints of industry components used to manufacture battleships, capitals, and super capitals will be adjusted to lower manufacturing time and cost. Dreadnoughts, in, particularly, in particular, will see their costs become significantly cheaper, giving you more chances to use them in space without as much impact on your wallet. So this is big because for the last about year and a half after the last major industry change, We've had really expensive capital production and really like it costs more materials than the ship is actually worth. So people aren't really building them right now and they're absurdly inflated in value as well because again, nobody's buying them. Uh, so, and again, they're still, they cost more to build than what they're selling for and they're inflated in value. So having the material costs come down uh, makes them again profitable to build and will also decrease their their actual value and thus mean that they're more explodable and more usable uh, and we're really excited about pirate ships because they're used more commonly than capitals uh, you can find all the G juicy details in the e forums so head over and check them out uh, provide your feedback and join the conversation so i'm going to go ahead and click this e forums link um, and i feel like we're going down a rabbit hole uh, a year ago we made a significant uh, update to industry where many higher and ships saw new materials added to their build components. These materials helped create additional value for various activities in New Eden and gave us the ability to more finely tune manufacturing costs when necessary. And this is why I was saying that this change was a good one, even though a lot of people have been really upset about it because what's been happening is all the things are expensive to build. And I'm like, dials and knobs, guys, dials and knobs. Um, the new Eden gave us the ability to finally tune manufacturing costs when necessary. Since that time, we've been continuously monitoring how the ecosystem has adjusted, and with this update, we're tuning the build material costs of these ships, bringing them down after a period of elevated prices. Uh, the goals of these changes are reduce the low-level PI demand, reduce faction and pirate ship manufacturing costs, greatly reduce dreadnought manufacturer costs, reduce other capital and super capital ship manufacturing costs, Reduce logistics requirement for capital and super capital ships. Uh, please see the full spreadsheet we've provided and a list of the blueprint materials and component changes here. Uh, so if we want more detailed numbers, uh, which I believe will be more relevant when the actual patch hits, as this is just a dev blog and not an actual patch, uh, as there are way too many of them for me to try listing in this forum post. Added a new version, fixed a few incorrect names in the spreadsheet. SDED has been updated, so you can now view the changes here as well. Hi, Steve, because Steve Roanoken was probably involved in making that change. Uh, this post is a call for feedback. The numbers in the spreadsheet are starting point and are not final. Changes will be millioned over the next couple weeks as we head towards release based on the feedback you provide. Please just let us know your thoughts on the values here and how you think they will impact manufacturing costs and what could be shifted to bring ships in line with their price exp expectations. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and take a, a glance at this spreadsheet and uh, look at component blueprints. I don't know what these means because I don't know what the actual value is or the before and after. I don't know if they have before and after here, uh, but it looks like we have a lot of data here. Capital blueprints. I don't see the changes, uh, but I do know that in Discord, we were discussing that before and after that battleships and cruisers were halved. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what the change amount is. And if these materials are halved, it doesn't necessarily mean that half the ships will be half the cost. It means that the cost of this part of their manufacture will cut down. Uh, so we're probably not going to see dreadnoughts that are half the cost. We could. I don't know. 
but uh, we will definitely see a, a, a reduction, uh, which is awesome because Dreadnoughts right now are in a really weird place. They're not really much stronger than Marauders, but they cost a lot more, so it's like you may as well bring a Marauder because they're basically a baby Dread, uh, DPS-wise, and they just basically have more tank than a Marauder right now, and they're really expensive. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on with this dev blog. Uh, after you've built your brand new ship, you're going to want a skin for it. Be sure to browse the new Eden store as a plethora of cosmetics will be returning for battleships and capitals. Get your hands on skins such as the Rietta Sunset, Ghostbird, Glittering Dream. Glittering Dream's a fantastic skin. Ooh, and Lava Core. Uh, and more from the 14th of April. Uh, further updates to structures. In addition to the blueprint tweaks, upholst structures will be receiving significant changes to reinforcement mechanics and timers as follows. All upholst structures will have their shield damage cap removed, armor and hold damage caps remain in place. The medium structures will have their whole reinforcement timer removed. So my understanding of this with mechanics that I understand is that as soon as you go through armor for a medium structure, you can immediately start bashing the hole. Uh, if there's no timer, that's what it sounds like. So they're going to be easier to take down. Um, plus 25% large and extra uh, large structure shield hit points. And minus 75% whole hit points for medium structures. So the small sh structures are going to be really easy to destroy. Where the medium structures, I feel in this, will be a little bit harder to destroy than the others. But everything's getting nerfed like across the board. Uh, because having... Uh, a, uh, damage cap for the shield timer means that you can strip a shield off of a structure very rapidly. Uh, whereas right now the damage cap makes it so it takes so long to to clear the structure. Uh, these changes are aimed at creating more interesting gameplay around attacking and defending medium structures such as Athenors or Estri houses. Groups making use of upwell structures will need to be more strategic in their placement and will be under more pressure to valiantly defend their defend against attackers. Make defending a little bit harder, uh, but it'll also make attacking easier, which is, you know, kind of tilting the thing a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how this impacts everything, but um, we'll have to see how it plays out. By removing medium structure hole reinforcement timer, armor reinforcement becomes the only timer. Accordingly, medium armor timers will now obey the following schedule. Uh, 4.5 days, uh, being 3 hours uh, for high sec. So... For every four and a half days, you have to be vulnerable for three hours. Uh, low sec and null sec will be 2.5 days and three hours of vulnerability. Uh, and then wormholes will have, wormholes and potspin will have 1.5 days and a three hour timer. And a war HQ has uh, 24 hours, I believe. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, I'm sure somebody in the comments will gladly explain it to us. After this, you will be able to bash both armor and hole in succession. This means that if you want to defend your medium structure, then you must do so on the armor timers as there will not be a second chance. So you have to stand and fight for the armor timer, which is interesting. A low power structure will retain their single armor timer, similar to full power structures. Remember though that if the low power for a week, then it will enter an abandoned state. They're immediately put in a structure and thus, yeah, it doesn't change anything there. Uh, with the structure update now available to test and still more to come, this is a perfect time to begin scheming and planning your carnage. With the capital blueprint changes, Dreadnought Pilots can siege green while being safe in the knowledge that the wheels of industry have their back. So go out there and bring on the wrecking machine. Um, I'm excited for the reduction of faction battleships and faction cruisers and faction frigates uh, to have their uh, costs to produce reduced as the blueprints will now hold value again, hopefully. Uh, I'm speaking in the kind of hopeful sense, but hopefully they'll have value again. And then also uh, having reduced cost capitals. It looks like they're not changing Titans, which is interesting. Um, because I didn't mention Titans in that. They just mentioned the supers and uh, the standard capitals. So carriers, faxes, dreads, and super carriers are what appears to be uh, changing here. Uh, which means that the landscape of EVE Online will become... Once again, a little bit more chaotic with capitals being around in low sec and null sec. More often, not saying that they're not out right now, because they are. We do see them in kill reports, or in, in kill mills. Uh, but we don't see them as often as we did before, when they were a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, this is. I, I, I think this will be a good thing. Uh, and of course, with the exact numbers pending, I'm not sure exactly how it will uh, influence the game. 
but I am for sure excited about it to have uh, more accessible faction ships uh, for newer pilots and also more accessible capitals, which is exciting as well. Uh, but make sure you guys fly fun. Uh, make sure you let me know what you think in the comments of this dev blog, and I will see you guys in the next one.